So I've heard a lot about the concept of bioremediation and utilizing that technology to clean up um, brownfields, clean up places where there have been chemical spills and things like that. Can you tell me about the different forms of bioremediation and some of the new technologies that are emerging nowadays? So it can even be as simple as using bioremediation to deal with when you flush the toilet, how do you deal with that wastewater? Really? So bioremediation can go from as simple as just daily wastewater to the bigger issues like cleaning up large industrial sites. Ah. Yeah. So on the big, big level, mm -hmm. like if you have a, uh, a toxic site, I don't work on those, but just for general viewer knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, the mycoremediation with Paul Stamets is pretty incredible because the, the mushroom network of all the little mushroom roots underneath can actually function as a big filter and then the, the fruits of that mushroom mat, which we call mushrooms, they're really fruits off that giant organism, uh -huh. they eat stuff. The bad so, stuff. So they can eat the bad stuff. So you can inoculate a whole site with mushrooms, with mushroom spores, and then as the mushrooms grow, they, they perceive these things as food, and they eat it and they neutralize it. So that's one of the great hopes of the future of how to clean up planet Earth from prior chemical contamination. And that's mycotechnology? Yes. Excellent. Wow. What about other forms of bioremediation? Um, I've heard that there's some methods that are called dry and some methods that are called wet. Can you explain some more about those as well? Uh, there's a book called Humanure mm -hmm. that's all about that humanity shouldn't be using fresh, potable water to flush toilets. When there's a shortage of clean drinking water for a large portion of humanity, like why, why are those of us in civilized, civilized communities using our unfair share of that pure drinking water on the planet and making it filthy by flushing toilets. Mm. So if you keep it covered with sawdust and dry carbon like plant material, mm -hmm. um, it, if it's covered then no animals and insects are in it mm -hmm. and it starts to decompose and the natural bacteria raises the temperature up above 200 degrees and if you can sustain these heated temperatures all the pathogenic bacteria die because they can't live in this natural temperature that's created through composting. Wow. And so then it ends up being pure beautiful earth fertilizer that you can use to grow flowers. Wonderful. And the author of Humanure regularly sends his compost to the lab and it has laboratory proof that there's zero pathogenic virus bacteria in it and he uses it to grow food. Wow, amazing. So then the wet technologies are the pond remediation um, and biocells that effectively have a, a reservoir of water down in these sand and gravel rock layers underneath the planter that's covered with topsoil and the roots of the plants go down and perceive the gray water or the black water as nutrients, as food, as fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And so they drink up all those nutrients that we perceive as polluting our, our potable drinking water and they put a bunch of oxygen in it and when the water comes out the other end of the biocell then it's clear Wow! and you can test it for the lab and be shown it's it's like clear it's pure there's no bacteria count in it and and then you can either use that to flush your toilet 
and water your yard and, and grow plants, or if you really believe your lab tests, then you just run that through your usual potable cylinders, your 20 micron, your 5 micron, your charcoal, and your UV, and, and you have clear, perfect water. And so then the ponds that are a little different than the biocells, they have snails and algae and lotuses and plants that naturally eat all those nutrients that are in that grayish blackish water. And you know the metaphor of the lotus, like it only grows in the most polluted water. Yeah. So in summary, we know we don't want to use chlorine and chemicals. So we can either use mushrooms to clean up land mm -hmm. that's been defiled with man-made chemicals, and we can compost it dry, or we can process it wet and use uh, plant roots and snails and living organisms to eat what they perceive as nutrients and purify it 